Hi, I'm Paul Dye. Welcome back to Kit Planes Firewall Forward, sponsored by Tempest. Today, we're going to talk about inspecting exhaust and induction systems. This is one method that works. All right, what we have here on the bench is a typical light aircraft exhaust system. Now you're gonna find that they come in a wide variety of styles, shapes, and sizes. Um, so we'll talk about different ones, but in general, you're gonna find something with a muffler like this, or one that just goes together. Typical RV exhaust systems don't have mufflers, they're just straight pipes. In any case, we're not gonna go into great detail on how they're built and the like, but there are things you want to inspect to make darn sure you don't have exhaust leaks. When you've got your, this is just a spare we have sitting on the workbench. When you have a chance to inspect your exhaust system, if you've got it really opened up like this and you can get it clearly, you wanna take a look at all the welds because it's very, very common to find cracks at welds. And you wanna look very carefully in the weld and just on the edge of the weld for anything that's a crack. A good, a good idea that, or something that could give you an idea that you have a crack is that you'll have a little exhaust stain. And it's gonna be gray, it's gonna be a little bit of a, a little bit of a stain. Um, those can happen and, and, and they're very subtle and you may not know it in flight. I've also seen cases where you have a big crack develop right in flight uh, where, the, where an exhaust pipe just cracks all the way off and you'll know that, you'll hear it. Generally that kind of a crack will happen this is an exhaust stack, so this part here bolts directly onto the cylinder. And, and most of the time when I see a big crack that happens all at once, it's right around this weld, right where this flange joins the cylinder. So when you're going ahead, when you're, when you're going to inspect your system, get a flashlight, look closely at all the welds, look for cracks. These Y joints here, they can be cracked. Take a look down inside and make sure that all the pieces are there and that you don't have the flame cone or the muffler coming apart. Um, and, uh, and just generally look for good condition. You're gonna find that, that uh, you'll have two kinds of, generally two kinds of, of um, expansion joints in these exhaust systems. Um, typically you'll have a, a short um, attachment stack which bolts onto the, to the uh, cylinder, and then this will either be a slip joint, or in this case, it has a clamp which joins it to the rest of the system. So you'll have a clamp here with a big beaded part. This goes on. Take a look at the bolts that join the clamp. Uh, a lot of times those will start eroding due to heat, they'll corrode, and they'll just start, start uh, looking really, really ugly. When that happens, you wanna replace them. Because if you don't do it before they get so eroded that you can't get a wrench on, you'll never get them off. You'll end up cutting them off with a, with a grinder. So take a look at those. And if you have the slip style, where this is smooth, and it's sliding into another part that's just a little bit of a flare, uh, get a little mouse milk. That's what's recommended by most of the exhaust system manufacturers, the guys that make these things. Then put that mouse milk in there. Just wick a little bit every time you've got your system off, um, and that'll keep that, that slip joint um, in good shape. The other thing to look for, if you've got a heater shroud, most airplanes have some sort of heat, um, and this is a pretty big one. This fits over here, and, and you'll have an inlet and an outlet. You wanna take a look for cracks in that, because it's just sheet metal, and any place where you've got some tension on it, look for cracks around an edge like this. Look for developing cracks. If you find one, put a little stop drill in it. Eventually, you'll end up with so many cracks and so many stop drills that it's time to just build a new part. But, uh, but you can keep one of these going for a long time. And, uh, and you just wanna check over all the condition, make sure that it looks in good shape. We'll go over and take a look at the exhaust system on the airplane and look at a, a few more things I want you to check. Taking a look at the exhaust system on the airplane, we wanna look for exhaust leaks here where this seal is, this, uh, this no blow seal is. And you wanna take a look for little gray streaks that could show up. These are kind of nice to have black cylinders because it's easy to see if you have a little bit of gray there. This one looks fine, we don't see any trouble. Look for, for uh, leaks on the, on the nuts and look around to see if you have any exhaust leak that's impinging on something else. Um, 
Down here on the joint, these, these could be slip joints or they could be these clamp joints. Take a look for a, for a, a trail of exhaust that's, that's spewing out um, that could be a problem. And take a look at these bolts here, these nuts and bolts, to see if they're corroded and eroding. eroding. These get really hot and that, can, that can, uh, can help the thing lead towards corrosion. So in general, you just want to look for any kind of leaks. And the other thing you want to do, frankly, is grab the, the biggest lever arm you can and give it a shake and see if something moves. There shouldn't be any rattles, there shouldn't be anything terribly loose, um, and, and it should be tight on the, uh, on the engine. So in general, just look for problems, look for anything that could be a problem, look for anything that could be clamped to the exhaust system like these EGT probes. Make sure that they're tight, not moving, and that they're not uh, wearing anywhere. It's probably easier to show you how this exhaust flange goes together on the spare engine. So let's take a look here. As a matter of fact, this is a good place to also observe a little bit of an exhaust leak. We can see it on this cylinder, and we can actually see it up on this cylinder. A little bit of a gray, a little bit of a rose color. So those are the kinds of things we're looking for. But let's talk about how this exhaust joint works, because it's a place where people frequently get leaks, and they are never quite sure how to fix it. This flange is part of the cylinder, and that needs to be absolutely flat and nicely surfaced. This one is, uh, has seen its age, so this one would probably need to be resurfaced to get a good seal. Then you're going to have a, 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 a a no-blow gasket, which is an interesting little gasket that has multiple pieces to it. It's all put together and it has a little compression in here. So that's the standard. If you've got just a flat gasket, throw them away, get, get a set of these. They really don't cost very much and that's the way you want to seal your exhaust system. And finally we have the header, the little, the little stub. Check and make sure that you've got a good nice surface there, that it's clean, you don't have anything. Then that'll slide, slide on and it's going to be part of your whole exhaust system. So when you're putting on the washers, um, what you really want to do, well, you're going to have a, a flat washer and a star washer. The, there are a couple ways to do it, and, and different people will argue the, the, which is correct. But in a general rule, you want to have the flat washer up against your component, then your star washer up against between the, that wa the, the flat washer and your nut. And the idea there is that nuts are cheap, and if you scarred the surface with the, and somehow scratched the surface with that star washer, it's cheaper to, to replace the nut than it is to replace the component. In real life, it probably makes no actual difference, but it's the kind of thing that mechanics like to argue about over coffee. And the one on the inside is always a little bit hard to reach. Once you have it on the airplane, of course, this is pointed down, so all the parts that you're trying to install are wanting to fall off. Um, so another reason for showing it to you here on the stand. There's a little shoulder on that nut, and uh, that little shoulder actually goes towards the, uh, the part that you're attaching it to. So we'll get that started. And then I'll show you the magic wrench that really makes life easy when working on exhaust. Because when this is on the airframe, it's very hard to reach, especially this inner nut. The best wrench I've ever found, the only one I know, or ones that I know, is Craftsman makes it and uh, Snap-on makes it. It's a shallow um, half-inch wrench socket shallow with a built-in universal joint. And that's very nice and compact and it fits right in. And if you take and put a long small extension on here. You can reach up through all of the wiring and, and, and stuff that you have in your engine compartment and reach that. And then you can snug those down. And the torques are not particularly high, so you can do that with this small quarter inch drive and get that just nice and snug. So make sure that you take a look up for your engine what the proper torque is, put it on a torque wrench and tighten those down and do it evenly and make sure that you don't warp anything. So the source of leaks you hear usually is that the, the, ga the, the they become under torqued, the gasket leaks, then the surface will erode, and now you have real problems. Once this surface starts eroding, and you can see it on this other cylinder, uh, you almost have to take the cylinder off to have that resurfaced or, uh, or reworked at a shop. But that's how you attach your exhaust to your cylinders. So that's most of the things that you're going to be wanting to look at when you're inspecting your exhaust system. Let's go ahead and start looking at the induction tubing. The induction system on one of these Lycomings is pretty simple. You'll have a, a fuel injection servo or a carburetor 
comes up through the oil sump um, and then out through these induction tubes to the cylinders. So you'll have four different induction tubes and you want to take a look at them, make sure we don't have a leak. Um, one sign of a leak would be little blue fuel stains dripping down this, which is a good reason for keeping these tubes clean. I would always keep these clean at inspection time. Then you want to take a look, make sure that there's a gasket in here. Then you've got this clamping ring and the two nuts need to be tight. And the inner, inner nut is a little bit tough to reach. They're 7 16 so use a quarter inch drive on a long extension and reach it, snake it up through there. Um, the sump end of these induction tubes actually are joined very softly. They have a, a piece of hose and then two uh, worm screw clamps which clip those tight. So you want to make sure that those are snugged up and again look for blue fuel stains to tell you that you might have a leak. Uh, a leaky induction system is going to lead for very very poor engine performance and, and uh, rough running. So it doesn't take much of a leak to, to give you that problem. So let's go back over to our other engine and take a little, a little closer look at some of these parts. The tube itself you want to make sure that when you take them off, if you're doing any maintenance, and they're easy to take off, that you'll put a little label on it to make sure it's come off a of cylinder one, two, three, or four. Some of them are identical, some of them are not, and it depends on the sump and the engine that you have. So make sure that you label them to reduce frustration later on. So you're going to have the tube, and it's going to have a bell mouth on one end with a nice flat flange. You're going to have the, the clamping assembly here, and it has a little groove for that to fit in. So when you put it together, you'll see that that creates a flat surface, and that flat surface is where the gasket goes. So the gasket's going to go on top of that, and then that's going to go onto the cylinder. The two nuts, or two bolts, the, the exhaust uses nuts, these use bolts, and again, you're going to have a flat washer, and you're going to have a starred washer when you put that together. The only trick when you're putting it together is to make sure that you don't lose that gasket. The gasket needs to be in there, and it needs to be nice and, and snug and even all the way around and not folded. At the other end, you're going to have this simple piece of hose. It's kind of like radiator hose. They're not very expensive. If you think the ears are getting a little crunchy from age, go ahead and just buy four of them. And then two hose clamps. And that will slide onto here and then slide onto the, the stub that comes out of the, the uh, sump. The two clamps go over that and you'll tighten them down. So exhaust systems and induction systems. The fundamental things you're looking for are leaks. With exhaust systems, there are also cracks. If you don't have leaks or cracks, everything's going to be happy. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Tempest for sponsoring the series, and we'll see you next time on Kit Planes Firewall Forward. What the f are we calling this? Kit Planes Firewall Forwards. Thanks much for watching. What's my what's my out? Rolling. And for the camera, this is our interstitial with the, the nuts. Discussion of the nuts.